everyone and welcome to my journal setup for March in the country theme of Monaco. Stick around and I'll share with you what I learned and what inspired me for my art and planning sessions this month. So the very first interesting thing that I learned about Monaco is how small it is and that it's not actually an island. <laughs> I don't know why, but I completely thought it was an island off the southern coast of France, but nope, it's attached. It's only two square kilometers in area and it's bordered by France on all sides, except for the Mediterranean Sea at the south. So it's home to just 38,000 people and it's also known as the most expensive and wealthiest places on the planet. 30% of the population are actually millionaires so I can't even imagine how expensive it must be to visit there, let alone live there. But yes, I'm sure it would be an amazing place to see in real life. So probably the most well-known spot in Monaco is Monte Carlo. And I'm sure we all know it, or I certainly do, from movies being the gambler's highlight. It's the scene where you would go if you had a lot of money to gamble with at the very famous Monte Carlo Casino, which is at Casino Square. And I think in French it would be called the Place du Casino, which just sounds so much more beautiful and it suits Monte Carlo for sure. So because the casinos are such a major highlight of the country and the people are so wealthy, I thought it would be cute to create a playing card to represent the casino and make it the Queen of Diamonds to represent the wealth. As you can see, I'm drawing a queen who I actually used the Princess Charlene of Monaco for inspiration here. I came across a recent article about a particular diamond she wore to the 40th Princess Grace Awards Gala and figured how fitting it was to use her as my inspiration for the Queen of Diamonds. Um, the diamond they spoke about in this article was really rare and special. And that diamond was actually a pink Argyle diamond from the very famous diamond mine that was right here in the Kimberley region of Western Australia, where I'm from. So that was a very cool discovery. Um, the other thing I did was to create the jewel queen image, like on the playing card. I used her reflection in some water below because before Charlene married Prince Albert II and became princess consort, she was actually an Olympic swimmer. So thought by adding the water there, it would be a great reference to where she came from. So quite a symbolic start to the cover page. And once I had this idea, I was just really excited to get started on creating her. So as you saw, I started with a sketch just in my um, sketchbook, which I have been documenting each of my daily anatomy sort of studies and putting them on Instagram and Patreon. Um, if you want to follow me on either of those platforms, the links are down below in the description box. So once I started with that, I was able to, you know, mess about in my sketchbook and make sure it was right. And then I scanned that in to my computer and then was able to mirror that image beneath for the reflection idea for the playing card. And then once that's done, I reduced the size, printed it out and then transferred it onto my mixed media paper. And then I went about sketching again. And it's so weird doing the same picture twice reflected on each other. It's so weird that you like one more than the other, even though you've done them exactly the same. Um, it was very strange how I had definitely one that I liked better. And I remember finding this out as well when I did, years ago I did like a frozen playing card of Queen Elsa. And I just remember liking one of the heads and hating the other one. <laughs> So it was fun to just build up like a nice um, pattern around her, just incorporating diamonds wherever I could and some nice little kind of Art Nouveau inspired um, patterns behind her. And I think it turned out really fun and cute, kind of retro. I don't know, there's something about it that gives me retro vibes again. So with that in mind and also wanting to include the correct colors for playing cards, I tried to use a bold red, a bold blue and black and then just little touches of a pale yellowy cream color just to sort of keep it looking like a playing card but also giving that bright bold retro vibe. Now the casino in Monte Carlo looks amazing and it's the most famous one in the world as I mentioned. One thing I found super interesting about the Monte Carlo Casino is that it still holds clocks and is the only casino in the world to have clocks inside. Now, if you didn't know, if you weren't aware, casinos do not have clocks. They want you to 
stay and gamble and spend all your money at the tables. Um, so I found this interesting and I think the reason that it has clocks is because it's so old, it was built in the 19th century and they were right next to a train station. So the people, the patrons in the casino, when the casino shut, they needed to know when the train was going, when the last train was going. So they needed to have some reference and way of knowing the time. So they had clocks inside. And they are to this day the only casino that has clocks inside. So I thought that was a pretty interesting little fact to come across. So just circling back to Princess Charlene for a bit, um, in case you are not aware or familiar with her, she is married to the reigning prince of Monaco and Prince Albert II is the son of Grace Kelly and Prince Rainier. But um, I'll talk more about Grace Kelly in a little while because, surprise, she's the mind map for my setup this month. Um, but yeah, I just wanted you to be aware of who she is because someone did mention on my Instagram post of this drawing that it reminded them of Grace Kelly. So I found that interesting. She's actually not related to her um, by blood, but she is very definitely connected. It's basically her, her mother-in-law is Grace C Kelly. So yeah, that is who she is. And she was just very elegant and very stylish. She's definitely known for her style. She really reminds me of Charlize Theron, which is interesting because Charlize Theron is also from um, South Africa, I think. And Charlene was born in Zimbabwe, but grew up in South Africa. So funny that Charlize and Charlene feel very similar to me and their names are similar and they're from the same place. So just one of those weird things that I would just share with you guys. <laughs> So you've seen me draw this playing card and then it was up to sticking it in. I just rounded the corners. I'm loving doing this on my pieces that I'm sticking in the journal. It just makes them look more finished and it suits the edges of the book as well because obviously the journal is rounded edges. So loving that little piece. Um, and then now I'm just titling the page out and I'm still trying to stick with just the three letters of the word like in my previous months because that's just really... I don't know, just ticking the boxes for me. Um, but this time I tried to use a really regal but vintage sort of style font for it. It just makes me think of a casino. So I don't know if that's accurate. It just makes me feel that way. So I went with it. Um, and then just put a little bit of calligraphy down below for the word Monaco so that I do not forget which country I'm at in the future. I'm sure I won't forget, um, but it's just there as an extra um, extra support <laughs> and here's a look at how my final cover page for the month of March turned out I personally really like it but I don't think it seems to match with my other cover pages so far but I guess that's gonna happen down the track they're going to not stay all exactly the same and just different colors so I've got to let that go and now I've broken the cycle so we'll see how we go moving forward and now moving on to my next page, which is the goodliness and gratitude page, where I track my good habits and also write a bit about what I'm grateful for throughout the month. I wanted to decorate this one with the national animal, or animals I should say, because Monaco has three national animals, which are the hedgehog, cutest creature ever, and the rabbit and the wood mouse. So when I put these three animals together in my mind, I thought they actually make a very cute combination. So I wondered if maybe they could be the other members of the card family to tie into the previous casino inspired page. So I worked on how I could make them into playing cards and a couple of the characters were just easier sort of put them within the cards themselves. So I did the rabbit as the Queen of Hearts with one of those crazy neck collar things on. Um, and then I did the Hedgehog as the King of Clubs. And then up the top is a little wood mouse of um, just holding like the spades card. So I kind of got each um, suit of cards onto the page to finish off that little casino vibe. Um, and then got to draw some cute little line art creatures. They were really fun to go with. And then I always like to include a quote on these pages, on the gratitude page. Normally it's something about being um, you know, grateful or something that makes you think nice thoughts to help you plan your gratitude spread. Um, but this time I went for something that was more related to the casino vibe. And it's also something that we always like to remind ourselves of. Um, and it's playing the hand you're dealt. So I really like this phrase because it can mean sort of a lot of things, but the way I read it is 
um, be resilient and go with it, go with the flow. So whatever cards you are dealt in life, that's it. That's what you've got and try and make the best of it. And no matter how bad your cards be, may be, you might still have luck at some point and come out on top. So I think it's just about staying positive and working with what you've got. So that's what I take from that little phrase. And so I wanted to include that here on the page as well. As I think it helps to be reminded of this sometimes when you feel like you're, you know, not getting ahead or you're feeling like you're being hard done by or things aren't going your way. I think a good reminder is to remember that this is just, this is just life. Just play with what you've got, just work with what you've got and you will get through it. Keep pushing and you know, think positively. And that's what I would like to do all the time. It obviously doesn't work every time, but this will be a nice reminder to do that. And then to color in these little guys, I did want to keep it quite simple on this page, but use those same colors from the cover. So I wanted to continue that all through this setup just to try and keep it looking cohesive. So I'm using that same blue and red and cream along with the black. And I really love how the font turned out for this title here. Um, and I just think it's really bold. And then you'll probably notice that on the side, I've got my habits this time. I've laid them out a little bit differently. I just thought I'd run them vertically to give me more space to write in for the gratitude list. Um, and then with the way I did the habits, it's also different. I didn't do any numbers. So I used, I've gone through a few things over the years where I used to write them all down every, you know, one to 31, however many times, but uh, I've gotten lazier in the, last, in the last half a year or so and I just didn't want to have to write them so then I was printing them out which worked really well and I definitely support that one um, but I haven't done that this time I sort of wanted it to be really clear space so I've just done the shape of the days so just around it left all the numbers out because I know what numbers they are anyway when I'm tracking so really it was just extra work for not much need. Um, not much benefit. So I did that this time and I quite like it. So we'll see if that sticks around in the future. Um, but then as it looks now, I was like, oh, it's lacking something. I tried washi tape, finding a washi tape that might work because I really think a little speck of gold would have helped. Um, but in the end, I decided not to because I didn't have the right color washi tape. Just nothing was working for me very fussy over here <laughs> and then so what I did was I thought I would just um, use that same red to color all the outside and that really worked for me it just seemed to pop so it's a bit full-on and dramatic but at least it looks finished now I feel like it looked blank before and so that is my gratitude and goodliness page finished and here's what it looks like And now turning over to the mind map page that I love to work on. It's a place where I kind of get to study a person from the country I'm exploring and then really work on a portrait of them in whatever particular medium I'm fancying that day. And because of my beautiful subject, which as I mentioned earlier is Grace Kelly, um, most of the photos that I found of her were that gorgeous portrait shoot that they used to do back in the day of the Hollywood icons where it's that really high contrast black and white shot that's just so soft and glowing yet very like harsh lighting and it just is super flattering on all of them that's why they all looked so gorgeous but there was a lot of beautiful shots of Grace Kelly I mean she's known as an exquisite beauty and the most elegant person probably ever to have existed I guess um, but yeah so I just was really inspired by these black and white shots so I thought maybe I'd keep my illustration to black and white and originally I was thinking graphite but um, I have done graphite a lot before but one thing I'd never really done before was a colored pencil but just using black white and gray shades so I thought I'd try that out as a little bit of an experiment so for those who don't really know much about Grace Kelly, I mean, I was one of them. I didn't know a lot about her. So she was an American actress born to a prominent family in Philadelphia. She shot to stardom in the mid 1950s doing films, her most famous ones for Alfred Hitchcock. Um, and then she also acted with Cary Grant and just became a real icon of the Hollywood glam. 
Um, and, but then only four or five years after she had established herself on the silver screen, she actually gave it all up and married the Prince of Monaco, Prince Rainier III. There is a movie about her life that I'm very keen to watch. It actually had Nicole Kidman in it playing Grace Kelly, which I thought was probably really good casting. Um, but yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I'd like to see it. If anyone's seen it, let me know if it's um, kind of accurate or whether you enjoyed it. That would be interesting because so, I'd like to see what her life became, you know, once she's left the whole Hollywood world and um, a very probably different country to then give it all up, move to Monaco where she lived with the prince, became royalty, and then she went on to have um, three kids with Prince Rainier. So I think it would have been like a very different world that she entered into. So I wouldn't mind watching that movie just to see it. As I've mentioned before on the channel, I find royalty quite fascinating and like what they have to go through and how hard it would be, but also how amazing. Like column A, column B, I get the whole struggle, but then there's also heaps of bonuses to being royal. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm intrigued by that movie. I might watch it soon. So yeah, I found that Grace Kelly was the immediate choice for me when thinking of what to do for my mind map. Um, and she proved so much fun to illustrate as well. I mean, such great photos to work from and this one in particular is just beautiful. So I really enjoyed working on this mind map page. And then to tie that into the national flower of Monaco, I always love to try and get that in there somehow on this mind map spread. And I decided to do, because she is royalty, she is a princess, I thought I'd do a flower crown on her head. Um, so the national flower for Monaco is the carnation. So carnations are beautiful flowers. So hard to draw though, because they're just um, a lot, a lot of petals and wavy lines. So what I did is a little bit sneaky. I decided to do that, the um, flowers in the bold colors from before, and but also just not pay attention to the reference much at all. Just kind of get the idea of a carnation coming through. So just a lot of wavy, wiggly lines and tried to just be more suggestive about what flower crown she's wearing. Although I have the carnation here, she actually does have a rose garden named after her in Monaco called the Princess Grace Rose Garden. Um, and she's got so many things named after her. There's even like the Princess Grace Suites at the casino that I mentioned before, like a penthouse there. Um, she's obviously hugely adored throughout the country and throughout the world, really. Just an iconic lady. She actually died at the age of 52 from a car crash. Well, actually, it's not really the car crash that killed her. I think she had a stroke and then she was driving at the time with her 17 year old daughter and they've fallen off the cliff. Um, amazingly, the daughter survived, Princess Stephanie, but she didn't. Um, Grace Kelly ended up with straight in hospital and died the next day from her injury. So that's really sad. It's always so tragic how these royals pass away. It's just um, incredible how many have untimely deaths. Um, but yes, she's forever remembered through all these things that they have um, dedicated in her honor. So yeah, so she is my mind map. I really had fun drawing this, like I said. I found the Prismacolor pencils worked really well doing black, white and gray. It was so much fun. I probably could have gone more in depth and really made um, this, the skin parts, the white parts, white pencil to blend it out a little bit more and do more layers and layering. Um, but I just didn't feel it needed it at the time. I mean, this is just in my journal. Maybe if it was a finished illustration, um, I would yeah, put in more time on a plain piece of paper and really work those layers, but I didn't feel the need to in my journal. But I really love the colors and I think the adding those bold flowers and the bold blue behind, it really just sets it apart. And then I'm just finishing this page with some text saying the mind map in the blue. And this was tricky to write down like this. I don't like how it turned out, but I was trying to get like a reversed out calligraphy style. Um, extremely difficult, so I won't be doing much of that. Um, and if you're not aware, the mind map page for me is kind of like a brain dump. It's a place where I put ideas and thoughts that come to my head throughout the month that don't have a space elsewhere in the journal. I find it really helpful to have a place dedicated to just random notes and ideas. So that's what this page is. And here it is all finished and ready to write on.
And now I'm moving on to my final set of pages that I create, which are my weekly spreads. So these are the areas where I work on my daily tasks throughout the weeks. And now this one is going to be a little bit shorter than most because in the month of March, we're actually going on a holiday. <laughs> Very excited, but also trying to keep it really low key because it is the first holiday we've had in such a long time. Um, I think I haven't been on a plane for seven or eight years and it's just, it's so exciting being able to travel again, um, but it'll be so different. We're going, you know, obviously with our kids and I don't think we've done, I think I've done one trip on a plane with my first daughter and that's it. We only went to Adelaide, which is the other side of Australia. This time we're going out of the country. We are going to Singapore and I'm so excited. I actually haven't done Singapore in my journal yet. So I thought, what a great opportunity. So that is our country reveal for next month's spreads. So so the next month theme for April will be Singapore and hopefully I'll have some yeah, real life examples and explorations that I achieve over there that I can include in my setup. So I can't wait for that. But yeah, trying to not get too excited because I do have a tendency to get too excited and then get let down or I get my hopes up and it just doesn't go the way I want. So just trying to be really cool and calm, collected about it. Um, but yes, we are going to Singapore in the month of March. So the time that we're away, I just cut out of the weekly spreads. I'll definitely take my sketchbook so that I can make some preliminary sketches. Um, that I can't wait to do. So that's why I thought I'd blank out the, the week and a half that we're gone from March. So I only included uh, two or three weeks of um, days in this setup here. Now onto what I am illustrating for it. So I love to do the little Dutch door weeklies or layered weeklies. Um, and I had to touch on the Grand Prix. So Monaco is known for its very famous Formula One race that's actually run through the streets of Monte Carlo. And I think that's the only race in the world that's run through a city streets. Um, so apparently it like, looks super impressive to be part of. It's hard to get a good viewing spot, but it's a great atmosphere when it's on and it's run every single year. And I know my dad always loved to watch the Formula One races. So when this um, particular Grand Prix was on, he was definitely ready to watch. I reckon he would have loved to have seen it in person. Um, but yeah, so I thought I had to illustrate that here. So I drew one of the Formula One cars and it was fun to do because I tried not to be too um, particular about the detail and I quite like the effect of it. It's kind of sketchy and sort of um, just relaxed. That's how I went in thinking about it anyway. And I really wanted this to feel imperfect and just a little bit sketchy and scratchy. So a little quick tidbit about the history of Formula One. The Monaco Grand Prix started in 1929 and it has been running every year since except for 1939 to 1945 during the Second World War and a couple more years where one of them was 2020 for the COVID pandemic. But it is definitely held as the most highly regarded motorsport uh, competition in the world today. So I could definitely not leave that one out of the Monaco spreads. And then, so behind the Formula One car, I decided to do some scratchy illustrations still of a couple of places that I would definitely like to see if I was to ever get to Monaco. Um, this building that I'm illustrating here is the Oceanographic Museum. I feel like I'm saying that right. It's basically a museum dedicated to oceanography and everything related to the ocean. So there's a gorgeous aquarium there. I did see some pictures of large whale skeletons and then just the studies of everything ocean based. So a huge topic to cover, but I just loved the location of it. I mean, look at this building. It is situated right on the edge of the land and just like built into the sides of the cliffs. So I just thought it was a stunning building and it's definitely a place I would love to visit. I love visiting museums and these old buildings and just the architecture and then what you can learn inside. I think it's just a triple whammy to discover. Um, so I would definitely go here. And I also just wanted to touch on where this is located. This is actually located in a place called Le Rocher, which means the rock, which is basically a the old historical site, sort of a city um, of Monaco. So it's kind of like Monacoville. And this is the central historical hub of the, of the country itself. So Le Rocher has a lot of places to visit and 
One of them is this oceanography museum. And then another one that I wanted to sketch in front is, you'll see me drawing all these random cactuses or cacti in front of, or just behind the car. And that's basically a little nod to a place called Jardin Exotique, which is an exotic gardens. And it's got, and it's all through the streets of this old world, La Roche. And um, yeah, it just has all these cactus and random tropical plants just sprouting out off the side of the cliffs, which I thought was just really cool and unique. So I wanted to get that in there too. And it just sort of ties a few things and I feel like looking at this weekly illustration, it makes me think of Monaco. So I'm really happy with how that one turned out. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my little scratchings and the little way I finished off the weeklies. Um, there's so much more to explore of Monaco. It's hard to get everything into here. Even though this is such a small country, I would just love to visit it and at least you'd feel like you could achieve most of it. Some of the bigger countries, I feel I like cannot do them justice, but yeah, um, if you've been to Monaco, let me know. I'd love to know what it what it's like when you're really there. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this setup. Let's have a quick look back through the spreads that we did today. So while we're having a look at the flip through, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. Now on Patreon, I mentioned that I um, keep you posted with what I'm working on in the background and offer exclusive videos, discounts, art, and also you receive this theme and every monthly theme I do as a printable, you get that free when you sign up to certain tiers. So if you wanna check that out, the link is down in the description box. But to those of you who are already patrons, I thank you so much for your support I really, really appreciate it and hope you're enjoying the content over there as well as on here. Thank you so much to everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.